Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to share with you three unexpected consequences of having uncontrolled acid reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD or GORD, depending on where you are in the world. So this is a very, very common problem. And it just means that the stomach contents move up through the esophagus or the pipe that connects the mouth to the stomach and they spill over into the mouth, throat, upper airways, lower airways. So this is a very, very common problem. And three unexpected things that may happen are the following. The first thing is a chronic cough. People who have acid reflux can actually have a cough that doesn't go away. It's because of those stomach contents coming up and irritating the airways, the throat, causing this cough. And it's a very, very common, common cause for chronic cough, for cough that doesn't go away. It's something that definitely needs to be looked into if someone is really struggling with a cough that doesn't, doesn't seem to to be shaken off, it does, doesn't go away. The second thing that I'd like to, to point out is that sometimes people may get ear, nose, throat problems, so ENT problems in this area. So rhinitis, sinusitis, problems with secretions coming from the nose, irritation, ugly green mucus coming all the time. This can sometimes be driven by the acid reflux. And it may seem a little bit strange because the stomach's really far away, but the stomach contents can be very, very acidic. And when they come up and irritate the upper airways, the upper passages, the nasal passages, it can cause a lot of inflammation, irritation, and drive a lot of these conditions. So sometimes you may actually have to treat your stomach as well as the nasal passages to get relief. The third thing I'd like to mention is that sometimes acid reflux can actually worsen lung disease or even trigger it. So this is something that I, is really, really important to know. So for example, people who suffer with asthma generally will struggle if they have a lot of acid reflux because the acid will come up, will irritate the airways and cause worsening of the asthma, poor asthma control. You may need more medication to get on top of the asthma because of the irritation in the airways that's driven, triggered by this acid. At the same time, in asthma, there is also the possibility that there may be a vicious circle going on. What do I mean by this? So sometimes when you have asthma and you have a bit of reflux, you know, you may be able to manage it, but the medication that you are taking for asthma, the inhalers that you are taking can have as a side effect, uh, the possibility of increasing the acid reflux. So it's something you need to be aware of and make careful adjustments to your diet, make sure you control everything very well, because actually the medication itself that you're taking for the asthma, the inhalers, the bronchodilators, the, the, the inhalers that open up the airways may actually relax the, mu relax the muscles that control the acid reflux. So, so that can be a problem because then that creates a little bit more irritation in the airways and then you're taking more medication that relaxes the muscles of the esophagus a bit more, and then you get this vicious circle. So it's really important to be aware of this connection between acid reflux and asthma control and try to get on top of both. The other thing is sometimes acid reflux can actually cause lung disease in itself. So if you're aspirating a lot of stomach contents and your, your lungs are not able to protect the airway, you don't have a good cough reflex, for example, potentially because you are on some medication or you're a little bit older and you know the reflexes are not as strong as they used to be, you can actually get chest infections due to chronic aspiration, aspirating stomach contents. Or sometimes you may get actually lung scarring, lung, lung fibrosis, because of the acid reflux or the acid reflux itself can worsen lung scarring, lung fibrosis. So all of these things are really important. And I wanted to just point these out in this video because there are associations between all kinds of conditions in the body and acid reflux is no different. I'd like to just mention also the fact that some people may have a mechanical problem that's actually causing the reflux. It's not something that they do. It's not necessarily something related to the diet they're having. Some people have something called hiatus hernia. The hiatus hernia just means that the upper part of the stomach uh, here herniates through the diaphragm or the, the membrane, the muscle that controls breathing and is just here. So basically that membrane goes down and up and it helps us move air in and out of the lungs but it has uh, obviously you can imagine the pipe that carries food from the mouth into the stomach passes through this diaphragm and then the upper part of the stomach can sometimes push up through that hole and that causes that little hernia that means that the upper part of the stomach won't close properly and that means that stomach contents can come back into the esophagus, into the windpipe after we lie flat, things like that. So it's really, really important to, to keep that in mind that 
in these situations, you may need to talk to a gastroenterologist to maybe discuss it with a surgeon if there's a very big hernia that needs to be repaired. There's lots of things you may need to consider. Diet changes are very, very important. So if you're struggling with gastroesophageal reflux, with acid reflux, try to consider your diet. If you are eating very large meals before going to bed, obviously that's not a good idea because when you're lying flat, obviously acid can come up much easier. So that, that's one thing to, to keep in mind. If you are a little bit overweight, do be mindful that the excess weight on your stomach may actually push the stomach contents up through, through the esophagus when you are lying flat because of the weight, the gravity that pushing on your stomach. So that's also something to keep in mind. If you are having a lot of spicy foods and heavily processed foods, things that don't sit well with you, especially later in the evening, do be mindful of that. Try to reduce those, those type of foods, change your diet. There is no set diet, I would say, for each person. Everyone has different things that may cause reflux. Obviously, the obvious culprits will be this very spicy food, very acidic food, um, having lots of uh, tea and coffee, having lots of uh, fizzy drinks and things that cause more acid and put uh, sort of di distend the, the stomach itself. So if you can imagine, if you're drinking a liter of Coke, you'll probably have a lot of buildup of that foam in your stomach that might push some of the contents out. So be mindful of that, those things. Also, try not to go to bed with a full stomach. So try to walk around a bit, stay on the sofa, stay on, in a chair, walk for a bit until the stomach sort of empties before you actually lie flat and go to sleep because some of the, the acid will come up and it can cause coughing, it can, can cause irritation. So I would be um, mindful. For example, if you are lying flat in bed and you suddenly start to cough as soon as you lie flat, you might want to consider that there may be some acid coming up. I mean, you may feel it sometimes. You may feel a metallic taste in your mouth you may feel a little bit of bitterness you may wake up um, with a little bit of uh, an unpleasant taste in your mouth that that can be sometimes an indication that there's acid reflux coming on some people may experience a sensation of choking or things like that so lots of things can indicate that there's a problem with acid reflux so one thing you may want to try, for example, if you're really, really struggling before you even take any medication is to change your diet, to make sure that your weight's um, within normal range as much as possible. And if you are coughing and feeling unwell, feeling unwell with the reflux when you're going to bed, you may want to try to sleep with your torso slightly elevated. So you can do that with pillows, but usually what happens is that if you put a lot of pillows under your head, you end up with your, with your neck bent but your torso is still flat because you're sliding down so sometimes it works to put some sort of um some sort of a prop under the mattress under the end of the mattress that would lift the entire sort of uh, end of the mattress the top side of the mattress so that you you are a little bit lifted up at a 15 20 degree angle so that can keep uh, the stomach contents down through gravity, basically. So so the, these are little things you may want to consider. There are these triangular pillows that you can find um, sometimes in the shape of a sort of a uh, with with an incline that you can sleep on so you can find these online i think and you can buy them there's lots of things you can do and it's important to also talk to your doctor about what kinds of treatments are good it's important to note that sometimes people go on um, they take uh, all kinds of anti-acid powders and things like that like rennies and all these things these may not be good they may actually cause um acid rebound. So if you're taking just an antiacid tablet or antiacid powder, those will neutralize the acid, but actually your stomach may end up producing more to compensate for that effect. So usually you may need to take a medication that actually stops the production of acid in the stomach, which may be things like omeprazole, pantoprazole, things like that, or ranitidine. These sorts of things may actually control the acid much better. And also keep in mind that not all reflux is acid in nature so sometimes you may have um, reflux of stomach contents that not necessarily acidy acidic and it doesn't really respond very well to to these sort of treatments uh, to treat the acidity but you may want to consider talking to your doctor to see what other methods may be to reduce these uh, situations so hopefully you found this video helpful i know i started with three things but i wanted to share with you some methods to try to reduce acid reflux if this is a problem for you hopefully this was helpful and i'll see you in future videos all the best and good health